Today we continue our examination of the exciting document that has been released by prominent evangelical leaders concerning a celebration of evangelical unity in the gospel. And what this document does is present a several page preamble where the content of the gospel is explained in lay terminology. And then it is followed by a list of 18 affirmations and denials which set forth the essential ingredients of the content of the gospel in more precise theological language. What we have been doing in the past few sessions is giving an exposition of those affirmations and denials. And so today we come to number 10, the list of 18 of them. And number 10 reads as follows. We affirm that the bodily resurrection of Christ from the dead is essential to the biblical gospel. We deny the validity of any so-called gospel that denies the historical reality of the bodily resurrection of Christ. We see in the New Testament when the kerygma, or the basic proclamation of the early church, is announced, it includes within it a brief summary of the life and activity of Jesus moving inexorably to the cross and to the atonement, but then going beyond that to the glorious announcement of the resurrection. There's a very real sense in which the phrase, He is risen, is vital to understanding the New Testament message and all of historic Christianity. Now, in the resurrection of Christ, a couple of things are seen. The first thing that we see in it is that Christ himself is vindicated. In and of himself, he was sinless. Death had no claim upon him, because death is God's punishment for sin. And if one is utterly without sin, it would be unjust of God to punish him forever for sin. Now, we know that Christ willingly took upon himself the imputation of our sin, and the suffering he endured on the cross was not for his guilt, but for ours. But yet, God declares the innocence and the righteousness of his Son by acquittal terms of resurrection. It is in this regard that the scriptures say it was impossible for death to hold him. It takes a completely different view of the resurrection from the skeptical view of modern people who say we can't believe in the resurrection because it's impossible for anyone ever to come back from the dead. Well, the New Testament places the impossibility on the other side of the ledger saying it's utterly impossible that he not come back from the dead because of his own personal innocence. But beyond that, the second reason why the resurrection is so important to the gospel is that the New Testament announces that Christ made an atonement for our sins and that he was raised for our justification. Uh, our justification before God rests upon the work of Christ. Now suppose he would have offered a sacrifice in our behalf and offered the perfection of his own merit and righteousness to the Father and died and stayed dead. We have no reason to believe that the sacrifice that he offered was ever accepted by the Father. But as Paul tells us in the book of Acts, in his speech at Mars Hill, the Father vindicates the Son and shows the truthfulness of his reconciling work through the resurrection. God bears witness to his own satisfaction by the work of his Son by raising him from the dead. 